Uh, I thought I was done with the controversial ones. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Heme Show. I, like always, am your host Stuart and this is edited by my long-suffering mate Andy. Say hello Andy mate. Good work. Good on you buddy. Okay, so today's episode is a bit of a odd one. I got a question through and it was such a good question I thought why not have the whole section this time as a question answer session. Um, so I guess Andy, let's roll straight to the question and answer. Cool. All right. So straight into it. And uh, so forgive me for getting my phone out, but I want to get the wording good on this one. Wording good. Exactly. Uh, so the question came through to me and I thought it was really interesting. So I kind of wanted to elaborate on it a little bit. Uh, so the question was actually from a friend of the channel, Rob the Axeman. And the question is, uh, question for Stu and the Hema show, as you are not afraid to handle the controversial, clubs like ours using weapon sets like heater shield and arming sword, um, is this Hema? Cheers for the question, Rob. Really like it, really like it. It got me thinking. I kind of have my immediate, not knee-jerk, uh, response, but my immediate response, and then I couldn't help but ruminating, thinking on this question, and the more I thought about it, the more it confirmed my initial thoughts, but I kind of got thinking about what makes Hema Hema. Um, so I will qualify this first by saying, yes, it's Hema. It's ridiculous, of course it's Hema. Um, but it did get me thinking, what is Hema? Why are things Hema, and why are things not considered Hema, and why do some people think that things are Hema, and why do some people think that things aren't Hema, and where do we draw the line? Um, so, to basically elaborate on my point, yes, of course sword and shield is Hema. Um, primarily, I think the line in the sand is how you do something. It's not necessarily what you do, what weapon you spar, or anything like that. It's more of how you do it. I mean, if we look at the name HEMA, H-E-M-A, Historical European Martial Arts, 50% of it is taken up by the martial arts aspect. Um, so if you, in my opinion, as a coach, as a professional coach, as someone who doesn't just do this as a hobby, someone who doesn't just run a club as a hobby, someone who runs an entire business around professional coaching, it's your attitude that you bring to it. If you do it in a martial aspect, I would say that that's Hema. Uh, you can use any weapon from history. I think the point that people make is that there may be no surviving texts on the actual weapon system. So we'll use sword and heat shield, for example. Um, to the best of my knowledge, if I'm wrong, um, pfft, slate me in the comments, hit the dislike button that doesn't work anymore. Um, but I'm, I think I'm right in saying that there's no surviving text in sword and heat shield. So then some purists, let's call them that, because everything else is probably far too four-letter wordsy, um, call it not Hema. Um, but it's a historical weapon. We know it was used. So it's not like it's something from fantasy that's been ported over and we're trying to jam it into our weapon system. Sounded unnecessarily sexy. Um, we're trying to work it into Hema. It, it happened, it worked. We, we know that it was used in history, so it's historical. Yeah, there are no surviving texts, but you know what? There's no surviving texts on Kopesh, for example. But you know what? That would be baller to be able to fight with. That'd be amazing. It's one of my absolute bucket list things is to not develop a system for Kopesh, but just have a good fight with Kopesh. I'd love to get involved with uh, any, any museum at all to try and get my hands on a Kopesh and have a go and see if we can brain it out between us. That'd be amazing. I don't care! Anyway, back to the point. Um, yeah, so just because it's not a surviving text, I don't think that that means it's not Hema or it's LARP or, you know, calling it something completely unproductive is even remotely fair, to be honest. Um, 
Because there are plenty of things that do have texts that we don't class as Hema. I mean, we look at Epe, for example. Epe, there are books on Epe. And it's an old-ass weapon. I mean, not as old as some weapons, but in the grand scheme of things, it's a fairly old weapon. So, is that Hema? Is doing that? I know that's going to get some people's backs up, going to get the neckbeards going, no, it's fencing. But well, that's my point, though, isn't it? We're arbitrarily drawing the line at something that's really old and we know was used, but doesn't have a book associated with it or a surviving manuscript associated to it. And yet there are things that meet that criteria, but we're not letting it into HEMA as well. It seems utterly arbitrary that some people will allow something into HEMA uh, and some people won't allow something that actually meets the criteria into HEMA as well. And the reason why I'm giggling is because it's so fucking stupid, isn't it? I mean, it's just... It's just this is dumb. <laughs> this is really dumb. It's a great question, Rob. I really like the question, but fuck me sideways. <laughs> we got to do a video on it. Because um, it's so stupid. Well, I mean, let's take a step back for a second. We're a bunch of grown-ass people in halls hitting each other with toy swords. Really, at the end of the day. Um, some of the toy swords might be more impressive than others, but that's really what we're doing. And it? It's not anything more serious than that. Uh, yeah, it's competitive and it's great. Um, certain lucky bastards like myself earn a living from it. Bonza, keep drinking that Kool-Aid please, I need the cash. Um, but it's, it's dicking about swords, isn't it? I stop getting so bent out of shape about it. If someone wants to do a weapon, yeah, let them. Why not? Why, why have people got to be the inquisitors of HEMA? Why do people have to be the arbiters of justice in HEMA? Um, let them do it. It's fine, isn't it? Just to get out of their way. They're not harming anyone. They're enjoying it. They're taking it seriously as a sport. They're probably, knowing Rob as well, actually, he's probably training harder in a weapon that's not Huber. Um, better and harder and more professionally than a lot of people are training HEMA approved weapons. Uh, you know, he's probably done it better than a lot of people doing that. So who cares? Who cares what people use? Honestly, you can use whatever, in my opinion, and this is, again, this is just my opinion. Um, I know this is a counter opinion to an opinion. This is, this is ridiculous, I'm getting stupid now. Um, but honestly, it's not the weapon that you do. It's the attitude that you have and you bring to it. Are you bringing a martial aspect to it? And is it proven to be used at some point in history? Yes, check. Yes, check. Brilliant schema then, isn't it? Obviously, it's historical and it's a martial art. And honestly, we only charitably use the European anyway. Um, you know, I personally would allow most weapons into my club um, if people have a genuine interest and they want to be martial about it. Um, I, don't, I, I don't particularly like drawing arbitrary lines in the sand. Um, so to kind of answer the first bit and kind of summarise my long, waffly um, opinion, I guess, um, yeah, it's HEMA. I think it's HEMA. Uh, I would love to see it in competition. Why not? Uh, I think it's brilliant. Uh, it's really good fun. And when we did the Fight for Life, the 24-hour charity event that we did, I fought Rob a couple of times with Sword and Board, and it was bloody great fun. Uh, it was probably a lot more tactical than some weapons, actually, because there's such a wide area, uh, area denial that you really need to think about where you can attack, um, and where you can open the line. The brief amount of sword and shield or heater that I did, it was very much planned to create the opening and go for the opening. It was amazing. I mean, you could say that about any weapon, but more so it was under a microscope, that concept with uh, sword and heater. I really enjoyed it. I had a great time doing it. I had a really, really good time doing it. So yeah, as far as I'm concerned, yeah, it's HEMA. And to be honest, I think, as far as everyone should be concerned, it's HEMA. All weapons are HEMA, providing they're historical. Obviously, if we're porting things in from films or that are just ludicrous creations of people's bonkers minds, then yeah, we're kind of blurring the lines between history and reality and fantasy a little bit. So maybe there should be a divide, but you know, if it's martial, it's martial. I shouldn't worry about it, dude. Um, and the other point that I wanted to bring up is why, I'll try and be political on this bit, why 
people feel the need to police others when they're just simply doing something that they enjoy. Um, if you feel, first off, if you feel that you're actually starting to gatekeep people or tell people, sorry, there's dust floating in my face, it was driving me mad. Um, you're telling people what to do or how they should do it or their weapon is wrong or how they're doing their weapon is wrong. You're kind of straying into the territory of being a dick. Just check yourself, take a step back. Are you getting in the way of someone's fun? Yes, probably don't then, isn't it? It's easy. Um, you wouldn't like it if someone started telling you how to do stuff, um, so maybe don't do it to other people. Our mantra at Smart Humor Clubs is D-Bad, don't be a dick. And that's pretty easy, you know? It's, if, if you're telling people what to do, you're telling someone that what they enjoy is wrong, that's kind of a dick attitude, don't do it. Um, and as long as they're not hurting you, as long as they're not dangerous, as long as they're not being toxic, then who gives a shit, right? Um, but why do people feel that they need to be able to police it? Um, really, other than what they want their own little hemisphere to be and their own opinions of what the hemisphere should be, not causing any harm, doing a weapon that they don't consider hema, which is, which is daft. Um, yeah, it's weird, it's weird. And you noticed, ironically, the people that are the, in I'm going to use the term inquisitors just because I've been reading Eisenhorn recently. Nerd! Uh, that's my nerd creds for you there. Um, but the people that act like inquisitors and tell people that this is HEMA, this isn't HEMA, this is right, this is wrong, you can't do this, you can do this. Isn't it ironic that those are the people that are usually the vocal, vehemently opposed national governing body people? Um, interest in that. Uh, typically, obviously, you know, there are no hard and fast rules, but it's funny, the two tend to coexist a lot more. We don't want to be told what to do. We want to do freedom. We want, don't want an organisation telling us what to do, but fuck you, you can't use a sword and shield. Um, it's, yeah, that, that irony is not lost on me. <laughs> but yeah, so honestly, I, I don't understand why some people feel they need to tell people no in HEMA. It's, it's not a, uh, a governed sport, it's not an Olympic sport. We are in the lucky position that we don't have to take ourselves too seriously, so maybe we should stop taking ourselves as seriously. Take your training seriously, absolutely. Take your coaches seriously. If you are a coach, take your responsibilities and your qualifications seriously, absolutely. But don't take yourself and the sport too seriously. And when I say the sport too seriously, don't, don't lose the fun element of it. Don't lose the kind of the daftness that we all need to see a little bit more going. I'm in a hall surrounded by 30 sweaty people smacking each other with swords. Pretty cool. Let's enjoy it. You know, let's not get bent out of shape about what is and isn't an arbitrary line in the sand that we've made up ourselves. Um, and it's, some of the more observant of you might be going, oh, Stu, but you are countering someone's valid opinion with your opinion. Aren't you just as bad? Um, well, no, because my stance is just let people do what they want to do, you know? My opinion isn't this should be HEMA and you're not allowed to do what you want. My opinion is let's just back off and let people do as they want and enjoy themselves and have fun in this cool, crazy hobby that we have. Uh, so yeah, that's my stance. I don't get it. Let's all, let's all enjoy it. Let's have more. More is always better, surely. Um, I mean, with a reason in the realms of the law, I guess. But yeah, the more weapons we have, brilliant. Why not have competitive partisan? Why not have, you know, spadone? Why not have competitive knife categories? That would be amazing. Why can't we have, uh, you know, sword and heater shield? Why can't we have these crazy things? Why not mace if, you know, we can get our hands on some properly safe competitive maces? Um, why not? Why not? Who are we hurting? Well, maybe each other with the maces, probably. Uh, but you know what I mean? Why can't we have Montante categories? That'd be fucking great. That'd be so good. So good. Let's stop putting walls up against each other. If someone doesn't do what you don't like, that's fine. That's fine. Don't allow it in your club. You totally have the right to do that. Don't tell other people not to do it. It's kind of a dick move. Anyway, I'm going to get down off this high-ass horse because the, uh, the drop is quite far. Uh, but hopefully... This one was for me to kind of go off on a little bit of a tangent, to be honest. Um, but hopefully, if nothing else, I've just given you the confidence or maybe the, not the validity, but you know what I mean. Just the ability to think, 
okay, yeah, you know what, just because somebody has said it, it doesn't actually mean that they're any writer than me. Um, as long as you're not hurting someone, as long as you're taking it seriously or taking your training seriously and you're trying to do it properly, who cares? Have fun. Enjoy. And you know what? Hopefully, one day I can join in too. See you later.